Okay, welcome back. Um, this is a continuation of question number eight from the C12 um, IAL paper from October of 2020. Um, one of the viewers, um, Thalia, I think it was, who told me that part B, this, the audio wasn't there in, in part in, in, the, in the question. So I've made an extra video, which I'm going to upload as well, this one for part B and C. It's only a little bit left of the question. So basically, so far we've we found, um, we've got parallelogram, we found this obtuse angle ABC. They've told us to, to use the angle that's obtuse rather than the, the other way, because of the, the diagram could have been drawn like that as well. So they want us to use the obtuse angle, not the acute angle, and they want us to use that to find the length of the diagonal AC, the length of the diagonal AC. Okay, so let's call the length of this diagonal I mean, we can use basically the cosine rule to find the length of this diagonal, or we can actually use a sine rule, probably easier, because we know um, we have to find this uh, this this length here. Okay, let me call this length x, and we know the angle that's opposite this side we're trying to find, and we know this angle, and we know the length opposite that angle. We also know this angle; we found it in the first part of the question, but this is given. This is given, it's best to use what's given rather than what's calculated in case. So now, here we can use the sine rule, opposites. We can say x divided by the sine of the angle opposite, 122.941, is equal to um, 6 over sine 23. 6 over sine 23 degrees. So x will be 6 times the sine of 122.941, divided by the sine of 23 degrees and that will give us our length x so we have 6 times the sine of 122.941 divided by sine of 23 23 and that gives us 12.8870 so, so you say 12.8870, so that we want to round it here to two decimal places. So we've got, we've let's say let x be ac. So we can say ac is therefore 12.9, 12.89, sorry, three to uh, two decimal places, 12.89 centimeters. So there's the answer to part B. Okay, we could have also used the cosine rule because we have two sides of the angle between them, but the sine rule is a bit easy if you can use it, so I use the, co the, the sine rule. Now for part C, it says find the area of the parallelogram, A, B, C, D in centimeters squared to three significant figures. Now the area of a parallelogram can be found in two ways. One way is if you have the perpendicular height Okay, the distance between the parallel sides, and um, you have basically um, the base. So it's a base times the perpendicular height. That's the area of a parallelogram. Now, if you don't have the perpendicular height, then you can use another formula. If you know the angle between two sides, let's call this B and this A, then it's basically A times B times sine theta. A times B times the sine of the angle between those two sides. That will also give you the area of the parallelogram. Okay, um, you'll recognize this formula somehow from something very similar that most people do know. For example, if you have here a, um, a parallelogram and you cut it in half and you get rid of half of it, you're left with a triangle. So the area of a triangle is like the half of the area of a parallelogram. So a half times a base times a height. We all know that one. We also know a half times a b sine theta. That's a and that's b and that's theta. We all know that also. Okay, times sine theta. So these formulae for triangles are based on these formulae from parallel parallelograms. You know that um, a parallelogram is double and uh, a basically double a triangle. A, tri a triangle. If you take a parallelogram and cut it in half, you end up with a triangle. Okay, so that's what. You know, um, those formally are based off of triangles. So anyway, that's just a little side point. So because we know two sides and the angle between the two sides, we can say the area is going to be those two sides, which is 8.6 times 6, 
times the sine of the angle between them, which is the sine of 122.941. So the area is going to be given by, so you have 8.6 times 6 times the sine of 122.941 in small accurate form. And that gives you 43.304, 43.304. So therefore, you can say the area is 43 to 3SF, 43.3 centimeters squared. So that's the answer to part C. Okay, now, a little side point again. Supposing, you know, we, we just use this angle here, 123. 0.941 we use this angle and these two sides which was 8.6 and 6 supposing we had this angle instead this angle is 180 take away that angle if we had this angle instead of that angle this angle is not the same as that angle so how would we get the same area well we know if it's a parallelogram these two sides are parallel these angles that add up to 180 so this this would be 180 minus the angle and we know that the sine of an angle as we just discussed in the first part of this video the sine of an angle is equal to the sine of 180 minus the angle they share the same sine ratio so if i did 8.6 times 6 times the sine of 180 minus the angle the, it's like the angle that's interior with this angle you'll see you're going to get exactly the same answer. If I just rewrote this, and instead of finding the sine of you find, finding the sine of this angle, I found, found the sine of 180 minus that angle, you'll see you'll get exactly the same answer. So it doesn't matter whether you use this angle or that angle, you still get the same area. Because the sine of this angle and the sine of that angle are the same because they are interior angles, they are, they are um, supplementary angles that add up to 180. All right, so the sine of 30 is equal to the sine of 150, the sine of 60 is equal to the sine of 120, so on, the sine of an angle is equal to the sine of 180 minus the angle, always. Okay, so that's a little, little side point again, but the answers for this part of the question, this is centimeters squared, and here we have the answer to the first part, part, part uh, B. All right, so as I mentioned, this is the continuation of um, the last video, which the sound, the audio cutoff for part B and C. So I'm going to shorten that video and um, I'm going to add like a link to this video at the end of that. And um, uh, thank you, uh, viewer Thalia, for pointing out the, the lack of uh, voice audio after part A. Um, other questions you might want to watch from this particular um, paper that I've done some questions from can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from the topic of trigonometry from P1 can be found in this playlist here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Don't forget to go to the um, description links to find other material that you might find useful and you might want to share with your friends. Thank you for watching and see you soon.